So, as you may or may not know, Leah and I are married, and we are living with her parents right now, and we have been for the last two months. Over two months. Over now. two months now. <laughs> and uh, in this video, we're gonna talk to you about how that's been. <laughs> Sounds so ominous. Dun dun dum. <laughs> hey team, welcome back to another Levi's Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today we're talking about how we balance our values as a married couple while we're still living with my parents. As you might be able to hear, Leah and I are a little bit sick. No, it is not the Rones. I got a test. It was negative. We are not COVID holding humans were just stuffy humans <laughs> with coughs. <coughs>, <coughs> Proof is in the coughing. Also, Levi never mentions this in the videos, but you should like and subscribe. If you're liking what you're watching here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. He hates it, but I will shamelessly plug this because I think you're pretty great. Yay! Thank you. Now, all jokes aside, we are very lucky. We happen to get along really well with our in-laws. This is something that we got asked a whole bunch in our Q&A video, and we thought that it was big enough of a question to be dedicated to an entire video. We even talked about it on the latest episode of the podcast, because so many people were interested in our relationship, but also what that looks like when you're trying to be environmentally sustainable while you're living in someone else's house. Yeah, so if you want to know a bit more about like the personal side of what it's like to live with your in-laws, listen to Leah's podcast. If you're interested in more of the stuff that we talk about on this channel, stick around because that's what we're getting into next. Let's hop into it. So how do you live with the values that you want to uphold when you are living in a household that doesn't align with them perfectly? I, I would say that we get questions along these lines the most often, and it's something like, I'm a teenager living with my parents, or I'm a student living in a shared house, and I wanna live in a certain way, and all of these other people don't. The answer for this, it's never gonna be the same in any of these circumstances, but I think it's important to recognize how social dynamics play a huge role in that, and how compromise is something that, even though we're taught that it could be a bad thing, actually really isn't. Think of these beats as our relationship with Leah's parents. This is the social context in which we're living. Constantly evolving. Oh my God, you sometimes no. <laughs> <laughs> It felt deeper when I wasn't doing it. <laughs> I feel like it's less <laughs> sophisticated when I'm actually juggling beats. You're juggling beats. It's okay, it's a good metaphor. <laughs> Maintaining a diplomatic and a respectful relationship is our number one priority. And especially as kids, living with our parents for free. Thank you, mom and dad, yay. <laughs> but living our values is a very close second. So the debate is an ultimatum between being the perfect vegan or the extreme minimalist or totally zero waste, then you're setting yourself up to fail and you're creating resentment and tension in the household. Not only will that make your own personal choices to do those things, more uncomfortable, but it will actually push people away who might have been previously interested in adopting something to a lesser degree than you have. For example, we told my parents that we wanted to do fully vegan October, and at first my dad was totally on board until he realized that he couldn't have cheese. The man loves his cheese. So instead, he's doing vegetarian October, and his only caveat is that he can have cheese. So in the interest of maintaining our relationship with Leah's parents, we are striking that balance. We are finding that compromise. Yeah, we were probably not living as sustainably as we were when we had complete control over everything in our lives, but the reality is not everyone is able to live like that. So I hope that this video is helpful in showing you how we have struck a balance in this context so that maybe you can adopt some of those things into yours. So uh, let's break it down. To say that Leah's parents are minimalists would be a dramatic over-exaggeration. <laughs> 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 this bedroom that we're sitting in originally had three full-size dressers along this wall, absolutely filled with Leah's memories. All of my childhood things my parents had held on to, which was very sweet, but took us a full day and a half to sort through it all and clear it out so we could actually live in this room. 
We also helped Paige sell a bunch of stuff on Facebook Marketplace that was gathering dust in the garage. And Leah even went through and did a little Marie Kondo on her closet. Now, while my parents are far from minimalists, they really enjoyed this process of clearing out things from their house. Yeah. The same could not be said about how dedicated they are to plant-based eating. <laughs> and that's totally cool. Now, as you might have seen in our video where we talked about Costco, Paul is a Costco expert and Costco. he lives and dies for their cheese section. Now, while my parents wouldn't describe themselves as plant-based, <laughs> we have been doing a lot of cooking and eating of plant-based things while we've been here. So whenever we have the opportunity, we go out and we do the grocery shopping ourselves to make sure that there's lots of plant-based options in the fridge whenever we need to cook a meal. On top of this, we make sure to cook a bunch of meals and provide those to Paul and Paige whenever we can. Not only are we showing them the different things that we like to eat, but we also feel like we're contributing to the household because, yeah. as you said, living here rent-free. Least we can do is make dinner. Freeloaders. Da da da, almost 30 freeloaders. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it is very uncomfortable for a lot of people to balance plant-based eaters and non-plant-based eaters at the same time. But we managed to provide a plant-based alternative for our Thanksgiving dinner last weekend, and it went off pretty well without a hitch. We went out of our way to have vegan options for Thanksgiving dinner, but we didn't force anyone else to do that. They could still have their turkey and everything else, and we had our options. And I don't know, they even tried some of it and they thought it was pretty good. What we've learned through the last two months is that oftentimes people aren't as worried about whether or not the food that they're eating is vegan or plant-based, etc. if they didn't have to make it. Both of my parents and Levi and I, we work full time. So for them to just come home and know that there's a nice meal waiting for them, I think that's the main thing, not really what the food is itself. As long as it tastes good. I mean like... Yeah, you can't make it taste bad. The food no, has to be good. It has to taste good, but like, they also don't have to make it. Perfect example, we made uh, bean tacos and Paul spent the first half of that entire meal prep calling it dog food. <laughs> oh, well, it looks like we're having dog food for dinner. But he loved it. And then he, he, the, ate it, he loved he it. He kept talking about how good it was after we made it. So it goes to show that, yeah, you're probably going to get teased. Maybe it's not going to be as easy as just whipping out a batch of chicken wings. But if you can make that work, then maybe you'll change someone's perspective on plant-based eating. Now we're still trying to find ways to reduce the amount of packaging that comes into the house. And that's really helpful because we like to do a lot of the grocery shopping. Again, us contributing to the household, making it feel like we're not total freeloaders. We buy the groceries, but this also allows us to make sure that we're buying as local, as plastic free and as organic as we possibly can. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a very adorable series of stories where Paul and I went out for a father-son garbage pickup on the beach and uh, a lot of you thought it was really awesome. So they are definitely aware of the problems of waste and the system that they have in place is pretty good. Here in Nanaimo they have a single bin recycling system along with curbside composting pickup. Curbside composting is really incredible, and if you have it, please, please, please use it. Single bin recycling, on the other hand, is not my favorite because it often means that all the recycling is put into the same bin and a lot of contamination occurs, which is really not ideal if we're looking at diversion rates. Now, if we lived here full time, we would probably separate our own recycling and go through that extra effort of delivering it ourselves. But my dad, he has a pretty good system in place. So Paul just got home and he's already off to the races, filling up the car, getting ready to go. <laughs> Paul, you're already ahead of the game. Look at this. <laughs> hey, come on now. Be done. So along with those fluorescent tubes, we had a bunch of batteries that needed to be recycled, along with some glass, because for some reason we can't put that in the recycling bin anymore, and the usual array of cans and such. But as Paul was packing up the car, I remembered something that I wanted to bring. So we're about to head over to the recycling depot, but I realized that I wanted to recycle my leaf shave razor. See, I recently snapped the head completely off. I think this happened initially because I bent 
the handle inside of one of my bags when I was traveling. And then I also have this really bad habit of tapping my razor on the inside of the sink when I'm shaving. So maybe don't do that if you own a Leaf Shave razor. Leaf Shave has since hooked me up with a brand new gold razor, which I think looks really awesome. But one of the things that makes Leaf Shave such an amazing company is that you can recycle this entire shaver when you're done with it and all of the razor blades that you've been using during that time. All right, it's time to go. So we're off to the recycling center right now. I've got all of my old razors in this tin can, which I've folded the lid over so it's safe to dispose of. And if you're interested in getting a Leaf Shave razor for yourself, they're a pretty amazing company. Check out the link down in the description where you can save yourself 5% on any purchase you make on their website. Paul, any uh, contributions you wanna make to the plug? Any, 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 any supportive words you wanna? <laughs> We're all sick, I'm telling you, the whole house. <laughs> Paul was telling me that his brother and him have been coming to this recycling depot for years and they actually recognize them by their reusable bins that they bring in every time. Because of the provincial recycling program that's in place here in BC, we got $13 back for all of our cans, which was pretty amazing. Then we got rid of our fluorescent tubes and our plastic bags. And then it was time to say goodbye to my Leaf Shave Razor. So obviously what works for us and in our circumstance is not necessarily going to work for whatever circumstance you're in. It's important to emphasize the things that people are comfortable with and meet people where they're at. Maybe they're super into beach cleanups and reducing plastic waste, then you hammer on that and you get excited about that with them. Or someone's really into learning new recipes or new things that they can cook. And that's something you can lean into and try out different plant-based recipes. I think something that's often really overlooked is the potential benefit of living with your in-laws. Like, yeah, would they ever have taken the time to separate their soft plastics into a bag and bring it to a depot separately? Probably not, but <laughs> they might do it now because we've shown them how to do it and we've seen that it's really easy. I think especially now with COVID-19, we're living in different circumstances. Either you're living with other people or you're spending a lot more time at home. So this might actually be a great time to think about those things that you do in your daily life that can actually make a difference. But regardless of where you are and who you're living with, I wanna thank you for watching this video and taking the time out of your day to spend some time with us because I know that we really appreciate it. And of course, if you're subscribed to this channel, which you very much should be, then we will see you in the next one.